Hello everyone, welcome to Venkatna English Guru. Friends, we are talking about the authors of Romanticism. As a part of uh, Romantic period, where we covered two important writers. One was Wordsworth and the second one, S.T. Coleridge. Today we are going to talk about P.B. Shirley. One of the revolutionary uh, poets of uh, poets and essayists of uh, uh, the Romanticism. The moment you think about P.B. Shirley, and you need to remember uh, the atheist et and revolutionary ideas of uh, P.B. Shirley. And you should also remember the critical works that were composed by P.B. Shirley and uh, the different plays that were composed by P.B. Shirley. And one of the major important qualities of uh, P.B. Shirley and who introduced the ideas of Andy Gibson and Chekhov during the Romantic period. The process of writing a play in four acts, in three acts, that was introduced and started by P.B. Shirley. And you should also know, and P.B. Shirley was the major important writer who spoke about revolutionary ideas, hence he influenced a number of uh, thinkers, a number of political leaders like Karl Marx, Vladimir Lenin, and the Indian uh, our father of, in, father of India, or father of Indian movement, Mahatma Gandhi, who was greatly influenced by the ideas of P.B. Shirley. And uh, so there are plenty, and uh, he is also known for popular poems like Ode to Skylar, Ode to the West Wind, and uh, The Sensi, and plenty of other works, and the popular pamphlet, The Necessity of Atheism. And, uh, and he is actually remembered as the greatest lyricist as a part of English literature. That is what the major ideas of uh, P.B. Shelley and which we've been talking about today. So P.B. Shelley wants you think about and a very good evening all because I'm not able to convey you the wishes directly. I'm going to the class due to, because as I'm not interested to waste your time because you, you, you might be using a lot of data to watch all this. So uh, instead of talking about those trivial issues, and once we go to the topic, will be very useful. And, and at the same time, and we are approaching, you are approaching to your examination and in the first week or second week of October. So I also have that in my mind because I want to talk about uh, history of English literature. At least if I give you some idea based on literary criticism, would be very useful. That's what I'm, I've been thinking of. That's what I'm in, not in a hurry to talk about, but... So C was born on 4th August 1792, passed when 8th July 1822. C and lived and just lived for 30 years, 1792, 1822. Just led his life for just 30 years. Remember, remember friends. And we actually who died at the age of just 30, but created a lot of impacts today. We've been talking about in 2021 and we've been talking about P.B. Shirley, that, by that we can understand the kind of impact that he uh, created on the humanity. And he was one of the major English romantic poets, late romantic poets, and is regarded the finest lyric, lyric writer, and he composed most of the songs that were composed by Otto Schuyler, lyric, Otto the Westman, lyric, Otto Cloud, lyric, and Hymn to Intellectual Beauty, lyric. So most of the poems that were composed by P.B. Shirley were all about his personal musings, his personal ideas. Next. So as well as epic poets in the English lit language. And 1792 to Eightfields Place and Broadbridge Heath near Horsham, West Sussex, England. And he was the eldest, eldest legitimate son of Sir Timothy Shirley and father. And he was a Whig MP. And his father was a member of parliament a big MP and 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 his mother Elizabeth and Pilford Sussex land owner very rich very rich you know my friends and and uh, very rich opulent parents Sir Timothy Shelley and Elizabeth Pilford he had four younger sisters because as he was the eldest one four younger sisters and one much younger brother okay Next, his cousin and lifelong friend. This is very important, my friends. 
Thomas Medville because a couple of times it featured in the history of net examination, NTA examination, and Thomas Medwin, who was the biographer of uh, P.B. Shelley, repeated a couple of times Thomas Medwin, and he was one of his close friends and lifelong friend, wrote The Life of and P.B. Shelley. So Life of P.B. Shelley, which is actually composed by Thomas Medwin, remember. Next, and he is regarded the best lyricist in the world of English literature and mainly known for his revolutionary, revolutionary ideas and atheism and where he spoke about a lot of scientific issues and which were against the traditional institutions, which were against the religion, any kind of religion, my friends. And he was the, he was the first important writer who wrote about the rights of Irish people. Ireland, rights of Irish people, though he was from an English part of the world, England, but wrote for the welfare of uh, Irish people. And Mahatma Gandhi, you know, was greatly inspired by the works that were composed by. And Mahatma Gandhi, and he had a lot of impact of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, read vigorously the works of A.B. Shelley, works of Thomas Carlyle, works of John Ruskin, works of Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, because they spoke about the importance of civil disobedience non-violence. Hence, that uh, inspired Mahatma Gandhi and during his time. It, it was also appeared a couple of times and Mahatma Gandhi was influenced by the following romantic writer, P.B. Shelley. Remember, my friends. Next, he was also a member of different groups, my friends, during this period. The Setting School of Poets, which is also called Fleshy School of Poets. And these were the poets who gave a lot of importance to Satan. The antagonist is very important for, for these writers, not the protagonist. And uh, Robert Sutte, P.B. Shelley, and uh, Lord Byron, W. H. Hunt. And he was also a part of revolutionary poets who spoke something against religion, something against the traditional institutions. A revolutionary and poets, and, and uh, Charles and uh, broke down Brown, who coined the word revolutionary poets, and and according to Charles uh, Brown, these were the poets who were less educated from uh, low, and these were the poets who wrote literature in uh, and the kind of English which is commonly used by the labor class people. That kind of English which you can say in those days, and people called it Cockney. Cockney was the was the type of English which was commonly used by low class people, middle class people. For example, if you if you talk about Telugu, there are the different varieties, and in the same way, Cockney is one of the uh, forms of English which is commonly used by low class people. Okay, poor class people. So according to, and uneducated, less educated people. So according to Charles Brown, these were the revolutionary poets who used Cockney and which is commonly used by low class kind of people. So John Kitts, P.B. Shelley, Lee Hunt, Thomas Law Peacock. Hence, they wrote a lot of literature against the society, against traditional institutions. Maybe they are uh, cultural institutions, social institutions, or religious institutions. So P.B. Shelley was one of the members of these committees. And visionary poets. He was also, P.B. Shelley was also a kind of visionary poet. And P.B. Shelley Lord Byron, Lev Hunt, Thomas La Peacock, Mary Shelley. See, once you think about writers like Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and people were not able to recognize their ideas at the beginning. What happened to them? They were stoned to death. Usually, the world does not recognize the real, the good things take time to be recognized, but the bad things they spread like anything else in the world. So, in the same way, the visionary poems. So they wrote a lot of visionary poems, but people were not able to understand. So it's it's it happens. The world is like that. Because if you talk about good things, people are not going to recognize. And you should also, you should, uh, but if you talk something uh, which is a lie or untruth, which spreads like a rocket in the world, you can see. And these were the poets who wrote a lot of visionary thoughts. Visionary, which means not a kind of vision. Because... Uh, for example, you can see and writers like writers in, uh, uh, if you think of certain writers in India, but I can recollect a couple of writers, uh, uh, for example, D.H. Lawrence or and E.M. Foster, or if you, and once you talk about the Telugu writers like Gadda, 
you might have heard about a popular writer called gadar and and once you listen to his poetry you don't understand you feel like and if you do not have some background to literature there is no chance for you to understand the writings of gadar but and he usually address and his poetry usually address it to visionary for example inanimate objects these were the writers they did they did not write poetry towards uh, at by naming people by naming anima animated aspects inanimated ob objects because this is what the nature of the world if you talk something if you speak truth and if you talk to the, to the people they don't receive the ideas and uh, uh, whether they are good or bad but if you indirectly talk to someone if you refer to an object inanimate object may be a sky may be a wind may be something and why you, for example you can see holiberty what crime what crimes have been committed in their name and it attracted a lot of people in the world why because it 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 is addressed to liberty what is liberty here oh west wind lift me as a wave as a cloud i fall upon the thorns of life who is this west wind it's a vision it's a symbol it's a symbol of something that's what and if you read poetry in a deeper sense if you read literature in a deeper sense the most complex kind of poetry and literature is visionary poem visionary song so and they are all very talented but died very young but created a lot of vision among the people and in the society next a close circle of friends and p bishal had two important close friends one was one was his own father in law and william godwin and the husband of mary wollstonecraft and father of mary shelley okay next william godwin and live hunt and p bishal shared all his ideas and with these two important writers william godwin and live hunt another important writer john keats and they these three were very close important close circle friends of p bishal in his life next some a little bit introduction with regard to happy bishal my friends sorry next a radical in his poetry so he wrote a lot of radical poetry so uh, that is why he was expelled from the oxford university at a very young stage radical in his poetry say when you read the poetry of vangapandu a popular uh, uh, kostal andhra uh, poet and who used to sing a lot of songs but you need to have a very big heart to understand the poetry of vangapandu and, uh, and that's what in the same way and we wish you or somebody and people say and the poet like john keats died at the age of 26 what did he write about and do you really believe that he really created impact on the world yes that's what and uh, and there was one one of the important indian writers who died at a very young stage at the age of 19 and that lady also created impact among the world in and in english literature so a radical in his poetry so his poetry is all about and his poetry is the moment once you understand that the the poem is addressed to uh, inanimate object which means that there is a lot to talk about in the poetry that is because it's very difficult to understand the concept called uh, which is addressed to for example say ode to skylar ode to cloud ode to the west wind see my friends so what are all these cloud skylar wind inanimate objects so in the name of inanimate objects and the convey something else this is called radical issues today you can say a kind of nexalism uh, and because and he is talking something against the society so radical in his poetry as well as his political and social views so to express his political views and he used poetry as a means as a vehicle to express his ideas shelley did not see fame during his lifetime that's what i have been talking about Mo not just shelley most of the english writers most of the experts most of the talented people in the world they are not recognized when they are alive when they move out of this world we will remember we come to know but that's what happens good people are not going to stay in this world for a long time only bad people have a lot of place in this world because you might have read a lot about this so he did not have any fame during his lifetime but recognition for his poetry grew steadily following his death 
after his death, not just Baby Shirley or John Kidd's, Charles Dickens or D.H. Lawrence, people did not recognize the uh, novels that are composed by the ideas that uh, he wanted to convey to the world. D.H. Lawrence's uh, writings, people were not able to understand. They burnt all the novels at the crossroad by and keeping all the bundles of his novels and they burnt all the novels in front of his eyes. And you can think of the person's feelings. So that usually happens, you know. Shelley theories of economics and morality, for example, had a profound influence on Karl Marx. That's what I've been talking about. He was the first important writer who influenced and that's what most of the communist ideas, socialism ideas, once you read and read the poetry of P.B. Shelley and you can find a kind of close association. A kind of close association. And once you listen to the songs that are sung by and the songs that are written by and a poet called Gadar in Telangana, for example. And you will identify the kind of a revolution that he wants to convey to the world. But directly you don't have any idea. But you must be a poet, you must be a critic to read the poetry. So first you need to have certain background and then you can read that. So P.B. Shelley was the major important writer who had a lot of impact on Karl Marx and his theories of communism. And uh, writings on non-violence, resistance. What is very important? Non-violence. Next, you see, and uh, and influenced both Leo Tolstoy and uh, Mahatma Gandhi's works. The Das Capital, which is influenced directly, he says, Leo Tolstoy himself and said to the world, I was greatly influenced by and the writings of Ibishan. So Karl Marx, Leo Tolstoy, Mahatma Gandhi, not just these, many of... Uh, Victorian and modern writers were greatly influenced and surely became a and lodester to the subsequent and to the three of four generations of the poets, including important Victorian pre raphaelite poets. There were a number of pre raphaelite poets like Deiserus, Tikasnarus, William Morris, A.C. Swinburne, George Meredith, J.E. Millais, T. E. Woolnor, Ford Murdoch's Ford, Freddie George Stephens, very revolutionary writers, all they were. And so popular during 1848, 1830 to 1848. And they were greatly influenced by the ideas, the theories of morality, the theories of social and cultural political issues, which were proposed by P.B. Shelley, influenced not just pre raphaelite 1930s poets of modern period. Okay. And imagists, impressionists, and writers like W.B. H. T. S. Eliot were greatly influenced by the writings. And Robert Browning and Dante Gabriel Rosite. Next, uh, he was admired by Oscar Wilde. See, Oscar Wilde was also a writer with creativity, and he wrote a lot of creative ideas. Okay, I'll talk about what what creative thoughts he created. Usually, people have homosexual and heterosexual relationships, but Oscar Wilde, for the first time, he created hetero homosexual relationships. And, and he created the characters. and But people were not able to understand these ideas. He was imprisoned a couple of times. And out of shame, died in 1894. And very popular writer, Oscar Wilde from Ireland. So people are not... Because those ideas were already there in the world. What is literature? Literature is all about what actually happens in our life. And Oscar Wilde, what did he do? He exposed... And he expressed the ideas that uh, he came to know and he, he was ex exposed to in the society. But people did not accept. And people know that that was a mistake. But when it was written in the form of book, and you will have a lot. So Oscar Wilde, well, Thomas Hardy, another important novelist of Victorian period. George Bernard Shaw, the popular greatest dramatist after Shakespeare. And veteran Brazil, the Nobel laureate, W.B. Yeats, and the Nobel laureate. Upton Sinclair and Isadora Duncan, all these were greatly influenced by the works of P.B. Shelley, ideas of P.B. Shelley. Henry David Thoreau, my friends, is a very, very, very important writer, Henry, Henry David Thoreau. And one of the popular writers and writers of, um, first writers of American literature, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Henry David Thoreau, Herman Melville, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and Margaret Fuller, the greatest writers of American literature who exposed the ideas of transcendentalism, Renaissance, American Renaissance, American Romanticism to the world during 1828 and 1865.
and the first person and who wrote a wonderful book titled disobedience civil disobedience henry david thoreau and gandhi was greatly influenced by the works of ab shelley and henry david thoreau because he also spoke about the importance of civil disobedience next friends civil disobedience civil disobedience was apparently influenced shelley's non violence in protest and political actions okay next in 1816 his first wife committed suicide first actually eloped see as i told you and uh, let me tell you one small joke to you most of the people most of the lovers in telangana and if if their love is not accepted they simply elope to gujarat surat or bombay this is a common thing that usually happens in telangana if they are in love if their love is not accepted simply they are uh, together they elope to either surat or bombay in the same way english people if their love is not accepted so simply they elope to italy remember this italy rome so common thing it's a common thing robert browning and elizabeth barrett browning elope to italy pb shelley and his first wife and elope to italy so most of the uh, 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 popular writers of english and they have they like a lot uh, rome italy so they feel like it's a popular place for them to lead their life happily so committed suicide as shelley having married the daughter of william godwin mary godwin and she became mary shelley the land and he loved the best what is the land that he loved best italy so italy is the land that is loved by majority of the poets and john keats or robert browning or you can say pb shelley or you can have you can talk about plenty shelley's mentor william godwin the father of mary godwin and husband of mary wollstonecraft his first wife the celebrated feminist mary wollstonecraft the author of a vindication of rights of women had died giving birth to godwin's biological daughter mary wollstonecraft godwin and she becomes mary shelley after marrying pb shelley okay next on july death how did he die a couple of times it was and it featured in the history of different examinations on Jul- and 8 july 1822 less than a month before his 30th birthday shelley drowned so how did shelley die drowning himself okay drowned in a sudden storm on the gulf of spezia and while returning from alagon and in lorry in his sailing boat don juan the title of his boat don juan and in the full flower of it he was drowned when he was only 30 a sudden squall and is yet in gulf of spezia in ref- reference to his death it see a few lines of ariel's uh, song in the tempest you know ariel is one of the popular characters in the tempest okay prosperous servant ariel and that lines and that are written on the uh, on the tomb of pb shelley and this the inscription that is written on the tomb which which you can say epitaph okay i think it is there somewhere uh, i think it it has to be epitaph which means this is also very important my friends epitaph refers to the lines that are written the the popular lines that are written on the on one's tomb which you can say epitaph and the lines that were written on the tomb of p v shelley were actually taken from ariel's song and which were used in tempest written by shakespeare that's it next i feel like i think you remember this while watching like our video share our video to your friends who are not watching our class okay so share our video and like our video while watching so that and it benefits everybody next what are the writings important writings and short summaries of uh, pop i forgot to give you the uh, um, short summary of out of the west wind because i did not have any idea of talking about because i was somewhat busy i am giving you short summaries of all see in 1810 his first publication was a gothic novel justrosi gothic novel friends i told you what is gothic novel what is the first gothic novel i think you remember the castle of toronto by oris walpole and the the first gothic novel of pb shelley justrosi and in 1810 shelley published original poetry by victor and casere fortunes fragments of margaret nicholson with thomas jefferson hogg 
In 1811, Shelley published his second Gothic novel, Saint Irwin. It is also called the Rosicrucian. Saint Irwin, which is also called the Rosicrucian. Remember, another important Gothic novel composed by Baby Shelley. The pamphlet called Necessity of Atheism. Friends, this is very, 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 very important. The Necessity of Atheism. Friends, show me thumbs up if my voice is clear. Come on, quick. Quick, 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 quick. Show me thumbs up if my voice is clear. If everything is good. Yes, come on, quick. Show me thumbs up. Come on, friends. Yes, friends. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, The Necessity of Atheism, it's a popular pamphlet written by and his refusal to uh, repudiate the authorship of the pamphlet resulted in his expulsion from Oxford couple of times this was asked. On writing Dash, Shelley was expelled from Oxford University, Necessity of Atheism. So Necessity of Atheism, which is written by, uh, which is written by P.B. Shelley, for writing this pamphlet, Shelley was expelled from Dash University, Oxford, remember, 25th March, 1811, along with, uh, this is very important, my friends, Thomas Jefferson Hawk, along with uh, Thomas Jefferson Hawk. As he was the son of a big MP, again, he was brought back to the university. And on 20th August 1811, the 19-year-old Shelley eloped to Scotland with the 16-year-old Harriet Westbrook, the first wife of uh, P.B. Shelley. 19-year-old 19 19 Shelley eloped with uh, Harriet Westbrook. She was just 16. 16, see. And his philosophical poem, Queen Mob, a Utopian Allegory. And the first and another important poem, Queen Mob. It's a philosophy, Utopian Allegory. Next, see, Shelley is perhaps best known for his such classical poems. What are the classical poems? Ojumandias. Go to the West Finn. French, you can see what a popular poem and song it is. All are lyrics. And ode and lyrics. And ode to Skylark. Music, when soft voices die. The cloud, another important popular. And the mask of anarchy. And the words drama. I told you what is words drama. Okay. So words drama. The Sensei, composed in four acts, it's a tragedy. And Promises Unbound. Friends, Promises Unbound, Promises Bound. Promises Bound is written by Achilles. Promises Unbound is written by P.V. Shelley. Confused kind of titles. And long words drama. And a rewriting of lost play by the ancient Greek poet Achilles. So, Promises Unbound is nothing but the last play that is written by Achilles. Who is Achilles? We discussed one of the classical dramatists, Achilles, Sophocles, Plotus, Terence, okay, and Euripides. Next, which features talking mountains and the petulant spirit and who overthrows Jupiter. It's a kind of classical kind of aspects which includes a lot of supernatural characters. And remember that. So, long poems, very lengthy. So, romantic poets are known for writing lengthy poems. And odes, greatest odes, most odes were written by only romantic poets, as we discussed previously. Ode, which are written in 100 lines, 150 lines, 160 lines. Very difficult to read. So, Queen Mob. Next, you can see Queen Mob. So, Queen Mob and uh, the revolt of Islam, Adonis, Adonis, the popular astrology, and unfinished work, The Triumph of Life. And Shelley wrote Alistair, very important, my friends. Subtitle was asked, what is the subtitle of Alistair? What is the autobiography of Alistair? Sorry, what is the autobiography of P.B. Shelley? Alistair. Subtitle, The Spirit of Solitude. Solitude, you see, it's very important to have a lot of solitude in our life because your solitude remains and with you during your travels, during your and falls and fibles in this world. So what is very important for us once if, if if you sustain solitude, solitude sustains you. So you should maintain, you should cope your solitude in your life, the solitary life. So and Lavan and Satna, the revolt of Islam the, and the revolution of the golden city, a long narrative poem in which he attacked religion. Lavan and Satna very attacked. So Lavan and Satna, the revolution of uh, the golden city, the other subtitle, where he attacked religion and featured a pair of Incense was lovers. Okay. Next, it was later edited and reissued. 
the revolt of Islam in 1818. So remember the short summaries. Queen mob. Shelley's cruder atheism. Queen mob. Shelley is known for atheism and it doesn't and he did not believe in the existence of God. Hence, he spoke about importance of science and technology, importance of science, importance of revolutionary ideas. You can see the concept of uh, uh, the ideas of uh, Karl Marx and Leo Tolstoy. So once you think of the Das capital or the ideas of communism, and once you think of and where they give a lot of importance to science and technology rather than the outdated beliefs, the false and, and the cultural and social religious, religious beliefs which were created by somebody else and which is against that. The Queen mob, mob so shell is crusader atheism in the regular unrhymed meter. Alistair, the spirit, spirit of solitude, in 1818 wrote Julian and Madalo, a likely disguised rendering of his boat trips and conversations with Byron. So, very close. And Lord Byron and P.V. Shelley both married and uh, married two uh, sisters from one family. And in 1819, writing a tragedy, the Sensi, he wrote his best known political poem, The Mask of Anarchy, political poem, and Men of England, very popular political works, political social atheism. In 1821, Shelley met Edward and Elker Williams, a British, a British naval officer, and his wife, Jane Williams. Jane Williams, Shelley developed a very strong affection towards Jane and addressed a number of poems to her, such as With a Guitar. You will get bits. With a Guitar is addressed to. Or to Jane, it is addressed to. One word is too often profaned. So, because... And, and once you read that, and he develops a kind of uh, uh, sexual relationship with this lady. And he wrote these aspects. Next, uh, friends, you need to remember all the time. And what are the themes? And uh, so, you know, make the three important themes. And atheism, social issues, and uh, radical uh, issues that are related to society, radical issues that are related to politics. Lavan and Sitna, afterwards called Revolt of Islam. Sensi, among the longer ones, Julian Madalo, Massacred Paris. Sorry, Peter Lu. Next, Shelley's revolutionary political views and is very severe on Lord Castlery. So, this is the mask of anarchy. This is a political satire on the Lord Castlery. Adnoings, you know, this is actually a lament on the death of John Keats. And the death of John Keats modeled on and the classical elegy. And Shelley held to be responsible for the poet's early death. The Spencer and Stanza is here used. What is Spencer and Stanza? As I told you, nine lines out of which the first eight lines are iambic pentameter and the last line iambic hexameter, which is also called Alexandrian. So on the death of uh, his prose, Shelley began his literary career with the two boys' romance, Justosi and St. Irwin. Okay, Jastrosi and St. Irwin. These books were written when he was still at school and are almost laughable, bad in style and story. The only other prose work that is worth mentioning in his short essay, The Defense of Poetry. This is very important. I will talk about this in an elaborated manner and when I, when I talk about criticism, literary criticism, okay, don't worry. This is very important text as... Uh, P.B. as Esther Caldry spoke about fans and imagination, he also spoke about the two important concepts and we'll talk. And published in 1840, this work is sound of written, a strong exposition of the romantic point of view. And he published letters show him to have and uh, a man of considerable common sense. Next, lyrical power is equal to the dramatic genius of Shakespeare and he can also express a mood of blessed cheerfulness, a same and delectable joy expresses the keenest note of depression, despair. Why do you think people wrote about, uh, wrote a lot about depression and despair? And choice of subject and against tyranny, Shelley's Shellyan hero, very important. Shellyan hero, Byronic hero. So there are different heroes were portrayed during this period. So Byronic hero, which is created by Byron. Shellyan hero, which is created by Shelley. A rebel, who is Shellyan hero? And Shelley's era is just like a rebel, a rebel against religion, against society, against politics, against tyranny, a leader in the struggle which is to bring about the ultimate happiness of the humanity. 
that's what communism is all about but the, frankly speaking i don't believe in communism <laughs> because i am entirely against to against to the concept of communism okay because i'll talk about why i like why i like why i don't like because people have a lot of beliefs and we need to accept we need to reject but and we are not there to judge so he is one of that often the symbolism of the poems in the subjects of his shorter poems he differs from such a poet burns who is almost the only other poet who challenges him as a master of lyric we spoke about we have gone through it and surely lacks the homely appeal of burns robert burns who wrote a lot of love poetry and home poetry a lovable poet robert burns and you might have read a popular poem called my love is like a red red rose so his style is perfectly attuned to the purpose like all the finest lyrical style simple flexible passionate and direct clarity okay all that shelley's limitations are almost as plain and his great abilities he lacks humor you don't find any humor and his poetry is all about serious and which makes people think okay think and a kind of aspects so you once you read at least if you read the title and you will get some sense of thinking so if if you don't understand then uh, your level of understanding is not in the in the particular way so lacks humor his political poetry is often violent unreasonable okay and even to scott he was simply that atheist so the scott sir what to scott called him that atheist shelley and his death his reputation rose rapidly oh wind if winter comes can spring be far behind what is winter you are all in winter now you you want to have spring because what does it mean by winter winter is all, winter is all about difficulty you you want to clear net you want to become successful you want to qualify but and uh, what, what what is happening now and you are not able to do that so what is there in your life you have a lot of winter so you are expecting if winter comes can spring be far behind so if so what will happen if if you cry today you will be happy you will laugh some other day if you laugh to laugh today and some other day you will cry that is what the nature of the world that is what he talks about in his poem and what the west wind and uh, and major works of pv uh, shelley remember the wandering zoo and zestrosi original poetry pachmas fragments saint irwin and uh, the rosicrucian nest of atheism the popular pamphlet devil's walk queen mob philosophical poem and reputation of deism alastair the autobiography spiritual autobiography subtitled spirit of solitude and ulfstein and mont blanc hymn to intellectual beauty lawn and chitna which is also called revolt of the revolution of the golden city you can see the revolt of islam and poem and it will in 12 cantos osmandias the banquet frankenstein this is very important frankenstein what is the subtitle of frankenstein several times this bit featured the modern prometheus the modern prometheus but where he wrote only preface frankenstein it's a novel it's a gothic novel it is a, written by mary shelley and it was added a preface by pb shelley what is the subtitle of uh, frankenstein the modern prometheus or the pro- and very very important my friends and rosalind and helen next you can see the sensi a tragedy in five acts or to the west wind and mask of anarchy men of england england in 1819 julian and madalo next promise is unbound a lyrical drama in four acts or to skylark the cloud published in 1820 and oedipus tyrannus and composed only in two acts friends remember till neo classical period till neo classical period drama not just till neo classical period from classical period to till the end of 1798 till the end of neo classical period every drama is composed in five acts but romantic writers supported innovation rather than following traditionalism hence why is it necessary to write a drama in five acts why don't i write a drama in two or three acts this was an idea of uh idea of anton chekhov and rick ibsen but implemented by writer like pv shelley remember this so to ax the witch of atlas a noise you know the popular pastoral is written on the death of john keats 
and a defense of poetry, popular critical work, and alas, a lyrical drama, Triumph of Life, unfinished work on Frankenstein, on, on friendship. Okay, these are all various works. And apart from, you, you should also know, poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world, a popular definition given by P.V. Shelley. This is very important, my friends, you need to know. Okay, so this is what I wanted to talk about as a part of P.V. Shelley. We'll be talking about one or two writers, not one or two writers, only one writer, John Kitts, tomorrow. And stay tuned, like our video, share our video to your friends and classmates. Okay, guys, see you tomorrow.